Last week, I made a video criticizing the media narrative about quarterbacks and about Jimmy Garoppolo in particular. And while I stand by what I said, it occurs to me that everything I said would actually be wrong if it turned out Jimmy Garoppolo was an NFL Hall of Fame or NFL Pro Bowl level quarterback who had just fallen on hard times. And I don't want to be called out for being a hypocrite. So today, we're going to take aim at Jimmy Garoppolo and explain to you why nothing about Garoppolo's history in the NFL proves that anywhere he goes, he will be anything more than an average starting quarterback. Let's discuss. Jimmy Garoppolo entered the NFL as the 2014 62nd overall pick out of Eastern Illinois, not exactly a football powerhouse. But look, Bill Belichick was the one that drafted him. And if Bill Belichick sees some promise to use a second round pick on a quarterback basically no one had ever heard of outside of the college football faithful, well, he must be onto something. And then Garoppolo gets into the NFL and immediately backs up Tom Brady. And the comparisons of Aaron Rodgers to Brett Favre or Tom Brady to Drew Bledsoe or Steve Young to Joe Montana immediately start coming out. And that's where I believe the genesis of this narrative started. The media loves Tom Brady. And it's for a lot of reasons that once again, I'm not gonna get into today. We can cover in a different video, but the media loves Tom Brady. And so looking at his backup, that's the opportunity to keep the love for Tom Brady going even after Brady is retired. If Garoppolo becomes a pro bowler for another 15 years after Brady has retired, then we get to give the credit to Tom Brady and it allows us to talk about Tom Brady in every game that Jimmy Garoppolo is in. When Jimmy Garoppolo first started to get actual playing time in New England, he actually wasn't that bad. I mean, he was he was pretty decent actually when you look at it. So his first playing time with the Patriots came I believe in 2016, okay, he played six games. He went 43 of 63 for 502 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions, and I believe the Patriots won every game that he played in. Look, that's pretty solid for a guy, again, out of Eastern Illinois who had just been drafted two years ago, or two years previous, that's not bad. The controversy erupts where Bill Belichick agrees to trade Jimmy Garoppolo to San Francisco, and people or, or, or it wasn't Bill Belichick, actually. It was uh, it was the owner of the Patriots. It was Robert Kraft. And people were, were convinced that Bill Belichick wanted Jimmy Garoppolo to be the quarterback of the future for the Patriots. He was done with Tom Brady. He thought Tom Brady was over the hill. And Robert Kraft saw the dollar signs when it comes to having the world's most famous quarterback on your team. And Kraft orchestrated a trade to get Garoppolo out of New England so that Brady had to remain the starting quarterback for years afterwards. And I'm not gonna comment on the validity of that particular theory, just I remember that that is a lot of what the, the narrative was at the time. Belichick wanted Garoppolo to succeed Brady, Kraft wanted Brady to be the starting quarterback for another five years. So when Garoppolo gets to San Francisco in his first year, he plays six games, he goes five and zero. Oh, he throws 178 passes, 67.4 completion percentage, 1,500 yards, seven touchdowns, five picks. That's something that we're going to have to keep an eye on going forward. But then the injuries start piling up for Jimmy Garoppolo. And look, injuries are not players' fault, okay? that's it. It's not your fault if you get hurt. And so Garoppolo missed almost, he missed the rest of the season. In 2017, missed almost all of 2018 with injuries. And so... This kind of narrative that Garoppolo, he's the heir to Tom Brady, he was only traded because Robert Kraft didn't want him, but Bill Belichick saw the promise in him. It's just building and building and building. And finally in 2019, we get Jimmy Garoppolo's first full year as a starting quarterback in the NFL. And there are things here that really do stand out. Okay, first of all, the 49ers went 13-3 and that year. Jimmy Garoppolo threw 476 passes, completed 69.1% of them, uh, just under 4,000 yards, 27 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Averaged 248 yards a game, 8.4 yards per attempt. Does any of that sound like a bad quarterback's numbers? No. I'm not saying that Jimmy Garoppolo is a bad NFL quarterback. I'm not saying that at all. 
but I want to get into the nitty gritty. I want to demonstrate because it's so hard to remove a quarterback's play from a team's record. And look, for national media, where you have to cover the entire NFL, you don't have the time. You don't you, you don't have the time or really the incentive to actually to sit down and parse through all the numbers and try to figure out how much can we remove Garoppolo's performance from San Francisco and their and their actual record. Because you see 13 and 3, that gets chalked up under a quarterback's record. So you see that and you say, well, Garoppolo, he's gotta be one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. But let's dive into the numbers a little bit, okay? First off, I mentioned that he threw 476 passes. 19th in the league in pass attempts. 19th. This is not a guy that San Francisco turned to to throw a lot. Now he's fourth in completion percentage, so he was accurate. Good for him. 12th in yards. 17th in yards per game. Once again, proving to us that Garoppolo did not play a huge role in the games he was in. 248 yards per game in an NFL where the top quarterbacks are averaging 400 plus. Is it Pro Bowl level? No. Is it bad? No. It's not bad. Just not Pro Bowl level. Sixth in the NFL in touchdowns. He had some good red zone options, including the best tight end in the league, George Kittle. Eighth in interceptions. So that kind of gives the lie to this accuracy that we see when he was fourth in completion percentage. He did turn the ball over a lot. And it wasn't even because he was under pressure a whole lot. The San Francisco had a solid, if not above average, offensive line. He was 14th in the NFL in sacks. So all of this shows us that Jimmy Garoppolo, if you're going to separate his performance from how the San Francisco 49ers actually did that season with a 13-3 record, Garoppolo, again, was he good? It was fine. He was fine. But he wasn't a Pro Bowl level quarterback. He wasn't on that level. And again, I'm comparing this to the way that the media talk about Jimmy Garoppolo. Not, not even necessarily. If if the media had said, you know what, Garoppolo is an average quarterback, and he's he's a game manager. That's what tends to come out a lot. You know, people like Alex Smith, Teddy Bridgewater. They've been they've been described as game managers. So if you're going to say that and say the 49ers record is mostly due to the running game, is almost entirely due to the defense, and Jimmy Garoppolo was just kind of there, fine. I got no issue with that because, in my opinion, that's exactly what it was. He's not bad. I'm not saying Jimmy Garoppolo is bad. I'm saying that the media talked about him as if he is elite, and he's not. Let's continue. Let's break it down by game. The 49ers, thankfully, they only lost three games in uh, in 2019, so this becomes easier for me to actually look at the losses and see how Jimmy Garoppolo himself did. When you look at, I'm just going to look at, first of all, the number of attempts that he threw in his losses. Now, he threw 21 in a loss against Baltimore. Baltimore was one of the best teams in the league in the regular season in 2019, so look, they just got outplayed, and Garoppolo didn't play poorly in that game. The Niners just got outplayed. Nothing you can do. 34 passing attempts in a loss to Atlanta. Atlanta was not that good last season. Throwing 34 times, which was, I believe, the fifth most of the season, and then picking up a loss, that's not great. 46 attempts in a loss to Seattle. That's the most that he threw in a game all season, and it was in a loss. That just goes to show you, the more he throws, the worse San Francisco does. Of Garoppolo's top five games with the most passing attempts, Two of them ended in losses. Those were against Seattle and Atlanta, like I mentioned. And two of the wins came over Arizona, who had the second worst pass defense in the league. So he wasn't throwing because they needed him. He was throwing because Arizona's pass defense was much worse than their rush defense. So they figured, look, a high schooler could beat Arizona's defense, so we're going to do this. When you look at Garoppolo's performances in wins against teams over 500. Garoppolo threw the ball over 30 times twice in wins against teams over 500. One of those was 33 attempts in a game against the Rams. So when you look at the entirety of what the 49ers were doing, when Garoppolo was forced to throw more, the team did worse, unless he was playing one of the worst pass defenses in the league. The Niners coming into games against good teams, specifically good defensive teams, knew that Garoppolo could not be trusted to throw the ball more than 30 times, and so he didn't. And so you're looking at games against 
against teams like the Rams, where he threw 33 times, where you're close to that 30 number. Uh, games against teams like Seattle in the game that they won, where he threw the ball 22 times. His first game, or his second game against the Rams, where he threw 27 times. Again, the exception here is a game against the New Orleans Saints. It ended up 48-46. It was one of the best games of the NFL season. Garoppolo had probably the best game of his career. He went 26 of 35. That's 75% that's completion, 349 yards, four touchdowns, one pick. It was the best game of his career and really probably the best game of the season unless you count a game against Arizona where he went 28 of 37 for four touchdowns and no interceptions. But again, New Orleans, a lot better pass defense than Arizona. All of his worst games, and I'm going to show you the splits right now, all of his worst games came in close games where he would be asked to throw more. When you look at the record in one possession games, those are all of his losses, and that is not coincidentally where Garoppolo is worst, because in close games, especially where the clock is against you, you're not going to be able to control the tempo and run the ball the way that San Francisco likes to do. You're going to have to throw. And we saw it in the Super Bowl against the Kansas City Chiefs. When the 49ers got ahead, the Chiefs started to storm back. The Niners needed to score. They had to turn to Jimmy Garoppolo, and they couldn't. Garoppolo couldn't get the job done in the Super Bowl when he was asked to throw. When he's using the play action, when the defense has to back six guys out of the – or when the defense has to, has to get eight guys into the box, excuse me, in order to – defend the run and then Garoppolo's working with single coverage maybe a single high safety in the entire secondary yeah of course he's successful most quarterbacks would be successful if you put them in that scenario when you look at quarterbacks that are on teams Tom Brady being one of them where the run game is not always you're not always going to be able to count on the run game quarterbacks that still perform those are the top quarterbacks in the league I'm the Tom Brady's of the world, the Aaron Rodgers of the world, the Russell Wilson's of the world. Those are the top quarterbacks in the league because they can do it when the defense can anticipate the pass and those quarterbacks can just make throws and beat the defense. Garoppolo is not at that level. Garoppolo's numbers dropped considerably. Once again, I'm showing you the splits here. His numbers dropped considerably the longer he was in the pocket. When you're in the pocket for two and a half more seconds, okay? What that means to me is that defenses know when defenses make him go through multiple, uh, multiple progressions to the point where he can't just look at his first target, which is usually Kittle. He can't just check out of Kittle and, and maybe hit a dump off or someone like that. When he actually has to restart his progression and go back through, he is far less effective. And when you look at, again, some of the other top quarterbacks in the league, if you make them go through multiple progressions, they still complete a lot of their passes. They're still dangerous the more you make them do that. And once again, San Francisco had an average to above average offensive line when it came to, to pass protection. So it's not like Garoppolo was hurried like you see with someone like Kyler Murray or with Russell Wilson where they're, where they're constantly being hurried in their throats. But Garoppolo was not. Garoppolo had every opportunity to be a Pro Bowl level quarterback in the NFL and he's just not. And then when you add that onto on to the fact that Garoppolo is injury prone, which we know, what we're left with, if you watched my video uh, talking about Colin Coward's statement about Jimmy Garoppolo, what we're left with is a quarterback who is clearly inconsistent, clearly not able to sustain an offense that's going to make him throw more than 30 times a game, and he's injury prone. And so my question, to tie it back to Colin Coward's statement in my video last week where he said Garoppolo can leave San Francisco and be great somewhere else what about this makes it seem like he'd be great somewhere else to me he'd be even worse somewhere else because somewhere else wouldn't have San Francisco's defense somewhere else wouldn't have San Francisco's uh, running backs somewhere else wouldn't have that but he would still be inconsistent he would still be incapable of winning games in which he throws more than 30 times. He would still be injury prone. Nothing about Jimmy Garoppolo, to me, would make me think that he would be any more successful anywhere else he went, and in fact, he'd be less successful. Right now, Jimmy Garoppolo is in the best position he could be in because he's with one of the best defenses in the NFL, he's with one of the best run-blocking offensive lines in the NFL, 
and he has some of the better skill position players in the NFL, including George Kittle, the league's best tight end. To me, there is not a better scenario for Jimmy Garoppolo right now, and when you look at the numbers, he did not he was not a huge factor in his team winning. I think you could plug in any average NFL quarterback. Think about the quote-unquote game managers that we've known throughout the history of the NFL. Uh, More recently, when it comes to guys like Alex Smith, Kirk Cousins, Teddy Bridgewater, guys like that. You plug one of those guys into this offense, I think you're looking at the exact same. I think you're looking at the exact same team. Give or take a win or a loss somewhere. End of the day, I'm not trying to say that Jimmy Garoppolo is a bad quarterback. I'm trying to say that Jimmy Garoppolo is an average quarterback. And it cuts directly against the narrative of a lot of the media, including Colin Coward, who I made that video about last week, who I also have no problem with. I just wanted to make this video to break down in full a reason why the national media would not be able to go into and look at the numbers this in depth for a guy like Garoppolo. You got to use the eye test and you got to look at his total numbers, which, like I said, you see 69.1% completion. You see just under 4,000 yards. You see 27 touchdowns, which was sixth in the league. You're seeing 8.4 yards attempt. These are not bad numbers, but when you actually dive into it, when you look at the splits, when you look at his performance in losses, and you do it from a top down perspective, again, without the narrative, you see a story of a quarterback that does not live up to a lot of the hype that he was getting in New England when he got traded and then when he played his first full year as a starter in San Francisco in 2019. All I want to say is Jimmy Garoppolo is an average at best quarterback and when you hear any time the media will say anything, talking about Jimmy Garoppolo, you know, being a a future Hall of Famer or, you know, whatever it is they want to talk about or Lamar Jackson, I mean, any of these narratives... The major point here is if it doesn't smell right to you, that's the whole reason I made this video because I've heard this about Jimmy Garoppolo and when I watch him, it, it it doesn't it doesn't match. What I watch does not match what I hear. And so anytime that happens, just remember, the national media only has a few things that they look at. They use the eye test and they use total numbers. They don't look at the splits. They don't look at the game by game statistics. They don't have the time for that because they need to talk about 32 NFL teams or 30 MLB teams or whatever, you know, whatever it is. They got to talk about a lot of teams, thousands of athletes. And so they don't have the time to look this in depth. So next time you hear a media narrative that doesn't quite pass the smell test for you, look at some of the more in depth numbers and, and see for yourself that sometimes the narratives are constructed. And it takes a long time for the media's narrative about a team or about an athlete to change. And we haven't gotten to that time yet with Jimmy Garoppolo. Thanks so much for watching, folks. Go check out my video about Colin Coward that I made last week. Uh, If you are interested in, in my thoughts about it, again, I got no problem with Garoppolo. I got no problem with Colin Coward. Just calling it like I see it, which is what I try to do, and I think that's why a lot of you are here. Thanks so much. Subscribe for all all our content now and in the future. We appreciate you.